Welcome back to the session. We have discussed about prescriptive analytics or data optimization. And as part of that, we also understood that there are three key characteristics. For any business problem, if you can identify these three key characteristics, then your problem is more or less solved. It's all about going and getting deterministic numbers from the customer and using your own intelligence, plugging them into a table, then using solver to solve it. Formulation of the business problem and identifying these three key characteristics would be extremely important in solving any optimization related problem. So now we are getting into transshipment problems as part of network models. Let's take one example of a customer for whom we are currently doing project. This specific customer manufactures sand, okay? And uh, they manufacture sand in a specific location and they want to say export the sand to various locations within the city called Hyderabad in India. Right? All the sand are transported to two key locations and uh, they're actually transported to these two locations to Girmapur 1 and Deshmukhi 2. These are the two locations. It is very Indianized solution that we are looking at, a problem that we are looking at rather. Yeah. All right. So these are the two locations where the entire plan is, you know, transported to. From here, either by road, of course, by road majorly, yeah, it has to be distributed to the other locations, which is Girmapur 2, Sulakpali, Kisara, Laddaram, and Deshmukhi, right? So these five locations, the sands, uh, the, the sand that is manufactured has to be transported. <clears throat> Tons of sand, you can measure it in that. Currently, say you have Say we have 200 tons of sand available in Girmapu and we have 300 tons of sand which is available in Deshmukhi. So overall you have 500 tons of sand. Okay. Since this is a supply, you can represent using a negative sign. That is absolutely fine. This is just a notation for that case. And you have five other locations where you need to transport the sand. Say you're transporting the sand to Girmapu 2. And the demand is 100. Here the demand is 60. Here the demand is 80. Here the demand is 170. And for this location, the demand is, say, 70. And along these arrows, these arrows determine the direction in which you can transport the sun from here to here. And the cost of transporting per unit is 50 rupees. So one ton of sand to transport one kilometer would cost you, say, 50 rupees. In that way, Indian rupees, you have the values. And here, if you see, you can transport to Lagdaram. From there, you can take it to Kisara and back. From Kisara to Deshmukhi and then back, right? And you also have the cost associated. All these details are also populated in the table. From which location to which location can you transport, so on and so forth. I'll, I'll put zeros throughout. These are all variables here, meaning it, it can vary. Okay, here we have supply nodes. What are the supply nodes? Let me go here. We have two supply nodes. These two <clears throat> are called as what? Supply nodes. And then we also have demand nodes. Demand nodes are the places which receive, you know, items. And then you also have transshipment nodes. Transshipment nodes are those nodes which can both send and receive from the other nodes. If you look at this node, Kithara, if you look at Lagdaram, if you look at Deshmukh, uh, Deshmukhi, you know, you can both send to different locations and also receive. Here also, but here, you know, this is different. 
here you are uh, receiving primarily. Yeah. So, yeah, we also have uh, Irmapur where you are receiving and also you are sending. So, those nodes where you both send and receive, okay, are called as transshipment nodes. Trans shipment nodes. Meaning you can store certain tons of spam in these locations and transport a few other. So I'll choose a different color. This one. Okay. Then this one three. then five, then six. These are transshipment nodes. They can receive and also they can send. Two, three, five, and six. Okay, and when it comes to supply nodes, you have one and seven. And that node, which only receives, it cannot send. Each color the demand node, which happens to be this one, which is the demand node. So in this way, first you need to figure out which of these are supply nodes, which of these are demand nodes, and which of these are transshipment nodes. And these arts that you see, arrows, represent the decision variables. And we need to determine the optimal flow for each arc. Meaning? What is the optimal, uh, you know, goods that you would transport? I think the side end here, sorry, that's 30 rupees per unit cost. Okay, so this is the data that we have and this data we have populated in the tabular format here. <clears throat> those are all not rupees, uh, just ignore, those are all Indian rupees. So I can probably format the cell and just make it a number or, or let me make it a rupee. Yeah. It's a rupee here. Here also it has to be rupee. Things are changing. Indian currency is accepted in 20 plus countries now for the trading purpose. That's a great comment for us. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, back to our discussion here. So the decision variable is how many tons are you going to transport from one place to another? From one place to another, from one place to another, how many tons of spam would you transport? Point number one. Objective function here is <clears throat> number of tons that you're going to transport multiplied by the cost of transporting those many tons. Per ton, if you transport, it's 30 in that location, right? Then you have another variable, which is number of tons you transport multiplied by this. Right? How many of our tons you transport in that route, it's going to cost you so many rupees. Sorry, it's not per kilometer, it's on that location, on, the, on that path, on that uh, road. That is the overall cost per ton. Okay. However, here, one very important thing that we need to remember is uh, there, there always has to be a balance. You know, we have to balance out the problems. <clears throat> so... If you look at the supply, it's 500. And if you look at the demand, demand is 480. So always there has to be a balancing act. Okay. Now we also need to list down the constraints. So even before we list down the constraints, let me see that. This is X12 from 1 to 2. This X, one, four. Okay, from one to four. And then this X, two, three. So on and so forth. X, three, five. In that way, you have 
<clears throat> the number of tons of sand that you're going to transport from one location to another. And if you observe, this is your supply node. This happens to be your supply node one. <clears throat> so wherever you have Gimapur one, you'll have a constraint that x12 plus x14, the quantity that you transport from this to this or from this to this should always be less than or equal to 200 units. Cannot be more than that because you're supplying. Then you have a node 2, which is Gimapu 2. So wherever Gimapu 2 is involved, so we have it here okay. and also we have it here. So from 1 to 2, which is x 1 to, you are transporting the goods to this and this is your supply node, mind you. Then, so this is x12 this is x23 the number of units that you are going to send from 2 to 3 or, or yeah 2 to 3 so since you are sending it out you put a negative sign okay so this minus this should be 100 Less than or equal to 100. Oh, sorry, greater than or equal to 100. My bad. It should be greater than or equal to 100. How many units you transport from this to this? How many units you move from 2 to 3? It should be greater than or equal to this. In that way, depending on your transportation, how many units are going out? How many units are coming in? That's how many tons of sand is going out. How many tons of sand is coming in? Based on that, you formulate your constraints. All these would be called as constraints. Once you formulate these, it's a, it's, it's a very, very easy problem, isn't it? You just need to now, you know, trigger the solver and uh, just solve it. Simple. So, <clears throat> what are we waiting for? Let's just issue the solver and uh, solve this particular business problem that we have. All right. Sometimes it's Murphy law screen it's stuff. So let me go to data and solver. And what do we want? This part. And we want to minimize this. And this happens to be a total transportation cost. Means number of units that you ship multiplied by the unit cost. That's going to solve the problem. And what do you want to change? We want to obviously change the values on how many units you want to ship from one location to another. And we have a constraint, right? I mean, we have a lot of constraints rather. So we cannot have a negative constraint here. So I'm going to say that all these values, okay, either should be greater than or equal to zero okay one constraint is one another constraint is the number of units the net flow okay should be greater than or equal to these values here okay job done 
non-negative constraints, <clears throat> you put that uh, particular constraint and simplex linear programming problem and then you say solve. All these constraints which I have to write down. Okay, I'll, I'll just list down those and then I'll explain. So I think I have now uh, put down the constraints effectively. You can go to each and every cell and figure out what some if does, right? And um, it's it's extremely easy and simple formula. Sum if you provide the range and you provide the criteria. K5 is nothing but the first location. Minus sum if. Again, you're putting K5, which is the first location. And then you're doing this calculation. You're doing the same calculation throughout. Uh, the same Excel formula is being applied. Now, when you say solve, you will be able to solve it. And these are the number of tons of sand that you need to transport from each location to the destination. Right? And uh, yeah, you also have details. Supply is 500 tons of sand and demand is 480. So from Deshmukhi 2, you would not transport 20 tons. And the total transportation cost happens to be 22,350 rupees. Okay. So this is how we exactly calculate, right? And this is how you solve the transshipment problems. In the next problem, we are going to look at, um, you know, transportation problem the shortest path problem of course this is also transportation problem but this is this includes the transshipment notes thank you